All October I've taken you to hell with my crafts, and now you stand before the Lord of the Pits on his gleaming throne. Want to see how I did it? <laughs> Check it out after the drop. What a craft this ended up being. I had so much fun, faced some trials and tribulations, came out the other side. I can't wait to share the, uh, the journey with you. So let's get started. You can see at the end of the table there, I have my very large mini rep uh, representing the Lord of the Pits. And I wanna build a chair for him. So I've got him at the ready, I can go back and uh, make sure he fits in it. And one of the issues I had was his giant wings. In fact, one of the wings, um, it's, a, it's a Reaper Mini, so it's made from that softer plastic. And that softer plastic is just kind of bending. So although the wings are where I glued them, the weight of the wings is just sagging the plastic. So that was one of the difficulties I ran into while uh, designing the shape and size of the throne. I wanted to continue my LED work and I took a lot of inspiration from my Renaissance Festival Shrine video. Um, I start with some cereal box chipboard, cut uh, or design and cut lots of little runes in it. And this is going to allow the light from the LEDs to just beam through. Then I create some uh, XPS foam pieces, cut some channels out, and this way I can sink or countersink the edges of the uh, of the cereal box cardboard. This is actually ice cream. It's an ice cream box. <laughs> it's not cereal. It's ice cream. Delicious ice cream. <laughs> anyway, I do two of the <laughs> XPS foam pieces, sandwich that uh, piece in the middle, and glue it in. But don't, don't glue it in until you cut those runes out. Oh my god, I mean, why would you do that? That's insanity. I've only got a little bit of the rune cutting footage. Um, it doesn't take too awful long. Just put some music on, put a video on, get to cutting. Uh, it, goes, it goes by pretty quick, and it's totally worth it. It pays off uh, big time in the end. Don't forget to... Hit those uh, edges, soften those edges with your knife, and then go in and get your texture done with the tin foil first. Some of these pieces are fairly thin, and although they hold up well when all glued together, uh, that pressure with the tin foil it becomes very difficult. So try to remember to texture everything before assembly. Um, I'm not always great about it, but I'm getting better. With my two uh, armrest back pieces assembled, I am going to work on the back piece. And here you see I want the back of the throne to also light up. So I've done some runes here, and I also have this large uh, sword pictograph. Uh, you can see the sword appears to be magical, and it's piercing into this rough uh, world type uh, pictograph where the world is actually breaking. And I thought that was really cool. You could interpret this several ways, um, uh, one of which being the person who sits upon this throne is the sword that might break the world. I thought that was really cool. Um, you're free to do whatever kind of design or, mo or motif that works well with your uh, underworld or whatever kind of character you're creating this throne for that point it was time for the seat and again uh, seats don't work very well for minis minis can't sit they just stand they just stand on their base so this is uh, more of a stepped platform uh, but because the mini's so big and because of the shape of this platform it's going to give him the idea or the or the basic feeling that he is in fact sitting on a throne now I forgot to mention as I was doing it that I painted that back piece black and then laid some sanded over um, plastic. 
and I, this was it was my hope that it would diffuse the light better and then uh, from this footage you see my sides weren't deep enough and I ended up adding another inch of uh, XPS foam to either side just so that I could have some depth to put in my lights now I thought uh, one light would do just or one light did just fine with the uh, the shrine so nine lights were gonna look absolutely incredible now since I was doing different lights I thought it'd be cool if I did like an ombre red orange yellow uh, almost like a flame going up so that's what I did one row of lights on either side for the armrests and then one going right up the middle for the the back of the throne and then it was time to wire everything up when I put the lights in all of the positive leads were on one side all the negative leads on the other and then I connected all three LEDs in one row together all positives all negatives and then once I got all three columns done I connected them all to the uh, to each other and then I carved out a place for my battery wired up some leads for the battery and uh, and then attached the battery and here's a part of uh, some of my issues you can see I've got some weak connections in the middle I know I'm not soldering and, and doing it properly uh, I'm just a, a craftsman just trying to craft um, you can uh, tell me what I did wrong in the comments and I'll know for next time um, eventually I did get all of it to work but one battery was um, did not have the juice so I ended up taping three batteries together and it still didn't quite have the juice I wasn't getting the the glow in the show uh, in the arms that I wanted so I end up adding two more bulbs to either side a red and orange that would shine up and then I added four more lights uh, two red and two yellow to the back to add more um, more light at the back and uh, oh man what a pain it was to like wire new stuff into already wired stuff that I never planned on adding more wires to but I got it working um, yep I got it working here's some pictures of the of the base then wired in to the top with the additional wires on the top and boy it's really looking good but here's um, here's a tip from me to you tinfoil here are some of the things I did to make the lighting pop first off uh, diffuser I hot glued around parchment paper strips and glued them up the arms to diffuse light then I glued tin foil down the sides and um, all along the back and then finally I stole a larger battery pack from a dollar store set of lights and put that in there all of these things combined the stronger battery the parchment paper for diffusing the light the added lights all this stuff together um, was enough to really make the light beam absolutely beam through this throne it lights up even uh, on the table in the in the middle of the day it is gorgeous it was absolutely worth all the work and I'm real excited with how it turned out I had to clean up the bottom with some trim but uh, what ended up you know being a pain in the butt at first and uh, ends up really making the throne look great uh, these little trim pieces here and then my plans changed greatly because I wasn't using one button battery anymore I'm using an entire battery pack so I uh, use the basic shape of the top of the throne and then exaggerate the edges to create uh, a platform to glue the battery pack on then I use that and then uh, come in a little bit to create the top piece and uh, that with another piece is going to hide the batteries completely and then I can't just have the throne 
uh, the idea was to tie this into my lava terrain. So I turned to a dollar store pack of skull buckets and I cut the lower, lower jaw off. And these are gonna look absolutely amazing, throwing up lava. Here you see a, a quick little tower done. And of course, <laughs> Mrs. Broken Terrain has challenged me again. Oh, you got to make the lava light up, she says. So after having created the piece already, I had to find out a way to get a LED mounted up inside the skull's head and shining down. And I pulled it off. And then I've got the wires coming out. And now it's time to glue everything on this base. This is a 6 inch by 18 inch base. This is going to fit my 6 inch by 6 inch lava tiles. And these two towers with the skulls are going to be throwing lava up. And they're going to fit right in with the river pieces of my tile set. So after great difficulty, I'm able to wire both towers up. I have uh, the far tower attached to the other tower, and then this tower here is going to have some leads going out, which I can hopefully, and I do, spoiler alert, <laughs> attach to the bottom base of the throne, and thus linking all of the LEDs to the one battery pack and switch. And uh, here I am kind of testing to make sure I get all the leads and stuff proper. And again, I wasn't planning on adding even more lights. So here I am scraping off the, uh, the hot glue that I had uh, hoped would keep these um, connections together for a long, long period of time. Once reconnected, I hot glue the throne and the two columns which will be spewing lava down to the base and um, the throne is looking fantastic i'm so thrilled let's test these lights <laughs> adjust camera adjust boom oh my god it looks good <laughs> Holy crap. I love it. Okay, how do we do the lava? Well, my family is addicted to mini brands. We all have a thing for miniatures. Go figure. And this mini brands packaging, this nice curved plastic, is going to be perfect for my flows of lava. So I give it a slice, bend it. That helps snap the plastic exactly where I need it to snap. Um, this particular piece is two inches wide. The inside piece is going to be a little, a little uh, thinner. Uh, but you're going to have to like feel that out for yourself if you uh, if you use this technique. Uh, it's a lot of like um, working on the piece, putting it up to see if it fits, making slight changes. On this piece here, you can see I've tapered. Uh, the top from the bottom and this is going to give me these little slivers of pa uh, plastic keep those because you're going to use these to help glue the two pieces of plastic together to form your your lava spew I use the table to bend the plastic into shape once I'm happy I sand it and rough it up this is an attempt to help it defuse the light. I think a sandpaper would have done much better. I really need to uh, get some sandpaper. On the back of the back piece of the lava flow, I'm going to use more tin foil. This is going to help the LED light the entire stream of lava up, not just um, light emanating from the top. Then with a little hot glue, and the help of those little triangle, those slim triangle pieces, you're able to hot glue the two bits together. And then a little more tin foil on the bottom where the, uh, where the light hits. And that's just going to help, you know, reflect that light all the way up and really light that uh, column of lava up. Then a lot like the tiles, you're going to go over 
with uh, hot glue and create this texture. I tried to do a pouring type texture where the lava was oozing down. I'm gonna do that for both sides, so both sides have lava. And then I'm gonna go in and add lots of bits and pieces. Uh, the little chain, and uh, well, I've put chain on a bunch of my scatter and I wanted to put it on the throne. I thought it would look really cool. And uh, I was right. <laughs> I've got these little knobs. Uh, they just look like studs. Um, they're helping break up the monotony of this massive stone structure. Then it's a base coat of matte Mod Podge and black acrylic paint. And then I got this new Storm Gray. And uh, boy, it looks beautiful. I thought I'm gonna hit it up. So let's do this. All right, from this image here, you see the lava is all painted. Once again, I used uh, the airbrush my son got me. Once the black coat, base coat was already done, I glued those, uh, or I airbrushed them and then glued them into place. Now you saw with the light test there, the black base coat and then the gray uh, coat overneath really uh, does well to mute the glow of the skull. And that uh, LED glow just busts down that entire lava flow. Now I grab my Citadel skull box and decorate the base with random skulls. And this really helps with the scale of the piece. You know, it looks like a chair for the most part, but then you see these tiny, tiny skulls and you realize the, the gigantic proportions of the beast that sits upon this thing. It's really cool, really helps sell the whole, uh, the whole project. And then I turn to my homemade wash and just slather the whole darn thing. I'm gonna go in with some gunmetal gray and hit all the chains, hit those little studs on those uh, big stone obelisks. Every time I move it, the chains wiggle. I love it. Um, I didn't show you me putting down those supports, but it links the two side pieces to the throne. It gives me a really cool place to wrap some chain. Um, they structurally hold the whole piece together a whole lot better, and they look really cool with the chain on them, so uh, a win-win. Then we're gonna hit the whole darn thing with a dry brush of granite gray. I had a ton of fun with this project. I really pushed myself, tried some new things, and uh, I really think I'm better for it. And I've got this absolutely magnificent piece and just in time for Halloween, happy Halloween uh, if you're watching it uh, the day I release. And if not, hey, happy Halloween all year round, right? Keep a little spooky in your heart. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I'd love to beat last year's Halloween video, so um share share the video with family and friends i'd really appreciate it if you like it give it that thumbs up please and uh, if you want to see more stuff like this go ahead and hit that subscribe button i can't thank you enough and i'm just gonna let uh the camera show off the the throne and uh and sweep my lava tile landscape you see how the lava's pouring into the uh, the river pieces there. What a wonderful piece! I hope you didn't uh, you've enjoyed the hellscape uh, October, starting with the tiles, then the scatter terrain. Uh, the soul stones aren't uh, aren't here. That's what I forgot. Darn it! But. Uh, with that throne in the background there. Who needs anything else? Until next time, like each other, love each other, and craft on.